everybody. How are y'all? It's Mary at Yard Art R Us. I hope you guys are doing well. I am going to show you how to finish painting this pumpkin basket. Basket of pumpkins. So it's Sunday. I've got my angle. I don't know about this angle on the camera, y'all. Let's go back a little bit more like that. And um, I'm going to put a little bit of water in some of these paints and then we're going to get busy. Hey, Debbie, how are you? Are you having a good day? I was outside taking photos earlier, y'all. I took them around noon, and then I took them around six. Yeah, I guess about six. It was better at six than it was at noon, I can tell you that. Hey, Aubrey, hey, Carolyn, how are y'all? I'm gonna be painting this uh, basket of pumpkins, uh, but before I get started, I'm putting a little bit of water in my paints because uh, they've got a little bit dry on me. So, um, and I'm gonna do shading tonight for y'all, and I like to shade with paint that's been thinned down. And since we use an exterior latex, we're just a regular house paint, sometimes it gets a little bit gummy. Painting again, finally, way to go, Debbie. Finally, I know you've had so many um, remodeling things going on. Thank you, Debbie, for sharing that. And Debbie, do you think you could also share the link where they could buy this blank and or the template if they want to? If you wouldn't mind doing that, that'd be great. Um, let's see. It says, hello, how are you? Love watching. Oh, thank you. Let me see if I can see your name. Debbie, thank you so much for that. I love having you guys hang out with me um, because y'all make it all worthwhile. That way I don't have to be by myself. Um, so I'm putting a little paint in here, and I think I'm ready to go, y'all. I, um, I spent the day trying to get... We have girls that come in during the week and work with us. And they do a lot of work, uh, obviously. But I have to do a lot of, um, I guess you would call orchestrating and getting ready for them. And so I spent today kind of doing that, even though I really wanted to kind of take the day off. But, y'all, I have to say, I feel so much better knowing, like, I'm kind of set up for more success. What happened was, I'm Windexing this, y'all, because it was laying around here in my art room for a little while. And so it got kind of... Um, it gets kind of, I don't know, dust and dirt and allergy or whatever. And if you don't Windex it, if it's been sitting around for a little bit between your coats of paint, I would Windex it, y'all. That's what I always do. It kind of helps your paint from keeping to separate. So anyway, Windex is your friend. You can get it anywhere, and I use it all the time. I use Windex on almost anything. Hey, Ruth, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. And Shirley and Kayla, um, I'm going to show y'all how to shade this this little guy he's not that big but um he's got what i did is i base coated him and this is in light orange this is in that reindeer brown of course this is christmas green and then i put white under here and then yellow so if you want a yellow to look really good typically you're gonna have to put a white underneath it because yellow has a lot of transparency which doesn't make good for paint when you're trying to cover up a board you know what I mean? So I put a, a white and then I put yellow under there. What? I guess I got, I got something on me, y'all, because Lord have mercy. I, I reached over on that. Okay. So um, anyway, I did a lot of work today, and I was kind of thinking, man, it's Sunday. You shouldn't be working. But, y'all, I'm kind of glad I did because I feel like, okay, now I'm kind of more organized, and I, I won't have to work so hard this week. So. But uh, we've had um, one of our dogs, we lost one of our dogs, he passed away a couple months back and we had, we had had him 13 years. And so y'all, I was just boo-hooing. And then we have another dog who we've also had 13 years and she had surgery this last week. She had like 20 uh, bladder stones in her bladder. She's prone to that. So we've been taking care of a, two dogs, one of them had bladder surgery, the other one was a young pup that we rescued, and she had to get fixed. So I've been taking care of dogs all week, y'all, trying to make sure that they take their medicine, all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Debbie, appreciate that. Hey, Holly, how are you? So I don't know, y'all, I've been kind of stressed out about my pups because I always worry, am I doing the right thing? I don't have any medical training, so I just kind of like try to do what the vet says to do. So today, I was, actually last night, I was up half the night because I was worried about the, the girl that had bladder surgery. The one that got fixed, she's a young pup and she's doing good. She, there's no issues with her. She's, she's, 
she's probably ready to go now. She could do just anything. But the older dog, she's had a, a little harder time. But hey, Nance, how are you? It was a harder surgery for her because they did a lot of cutting on her. And they, they gave me a sack like this, a bag. And y'all, I counted it had like 20 bladder stones in it. And all the stones were about the size of my pinky fingernail or my thumb fingernail. I, I don't know how the dog was doing anything in terms of going to the bathroom because she had uh, 20 bladder stones in there. So I, that's why I've been kind of freaking out trying to take care of her to make sure that, you know, she is 13, to make sure she's getting the best care that I can give her. And um, I think, man, I don't know if I've always worried this much over an animal, but I do now, y'all. <laughs> All right, so I just shaded in some reindeer. I shaded that reindeer brown in shading brown. Now, when you're choosing colors, like if you're, you know, fall's coming up, and let's say, you know, you're not buying paint from us or you're doing a different project or, or whatever. I always try to think about when you do browns, if you can get three or four browns that look good, like in our case, we have the reindeer brown, the shading brown, and that shading red. Um, and then we also have a nutmeg. So if you can get three or four browns that look good, then you're good to go doing turkeys or gingerbreads or fall leaves or anything like that. So um, it took us a long, it took me a long time to develop the colors that we have, but I really like the, and then if I don't, if I need something else, I, I kind of go now, I know what to mix. So anyway, it's been, um, I like the colors now y'all, but it didn't, I can't, I can honestly say I didn't always like every color we had. Uh, but it's took, it's just a lot of, in my case, it was a lot of trial and error, to be honest. And you just try something and you didn't like it and you try something else and you like that. So, um, fall is here. Well, it's not here. Fall decoration, or those of us that are in the creative space are doing fall things. Fall is not here. Definitely not here temperature wise for sure. But y'all know what I mean. The season of, uh, creation for fall is here. And so always think about those fall colors. And the colors that we have, like this uh, reindeer brown, nutmeg, and um, shading brown and shading red, we do that for it, for all of our gingerbreads, our turkeys, um, and anything that might be fall related. I have uh, painted a lot of turkeys over the years. Uh, that's just something I've always loved. Not everybody likes to paint turkeys because they can be they can be difficult. I don't know that they're difficult, but there's just a lot of detail to them. Turkey is just kind of one of those things you're going to have to put a lot of work into the number, typically the number of colors you use on a turkey and how much shading you're going to do on turkey. But I will say a turkey is a beautiful thing if you, you know, if you can get it done right, I think. And if you're selling, turkeys always sell. Always. Don't know why that is, but that is, they, they just always do. Okay, so I had my, I did my pumpkins in light orange, and then I shaded in shading orange, y'all. Hey, Holly, how are you? I am uh, glad y'all are here. Y'all tell me, are y'all painting, and if what, are you painting fall stuff, or are you painting Christmas? Paula, how are you? I got to meet Paula's daughter yesterday, Sophia. She is as cute as she can possibly be. Just as cute as she can be. It was so nice meeting her yesterday, Paula. Just as cute as she can be. And she told me she's in kindergarten. <laughs> and she was at the party yesterday, just such a good, good kid. So, are y'all painting fall right now? Or are y'all painting, uh, I think Debbie's probably trying working on nativities. Or Mary and Joseph. You're painting pumpkin things, Holly? Yeah. Yeah, I would think a lot of people are. That's like we did Christmas in July, and then we kind of stop in August, and we do fall. And that gives, if you happen to buy blanks from us or anything like that, it'll give you a lot of time to make your stuff. And um, so, plus for us, fall time is, although this is already like the 22nd of August, y'all, and I, I'll be telling you, you'll still see me in September doing lives covering fall items. Like I'm going to do uh, 
some probably some more lives on those porch lanterns. I've got a mummy to do. And then I'm going to redo some lives from last year that I did some lives on, and I'm going to redo some of those lives. Nance says she's working on fall and Christmas ornaments. Je Debbie's working on Joseph. I know that's right. So Christmas and fall. Um, we work on Christmas all year long. That's just the way it is in this business. But a lot of times, sometime during the summer, I will stop all Christmas things and anything else that I'm doing, and I'll do fall. But I got a little bit of a late start on fall this year because I was really, I had so much Christmas I was trying to get done. We have a lot of new stuff this year. And new stuff takes a little longer. Then, I don't know if y'all figured this out or if y'all dealt with this. We've had lots of issues getting material because of the supply chain. So it's been, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, it, it's been a year. I'll put it to you that way. Paula says, I painted a lot of pumpkins last year, so I'll do Halloween now. Hey, and that's the cool thing about stuff like our yard art and stuff. And I know people probably get tired of me saying it, but if you use really good quality materials and stuff, you're going to keep what you did from year to year to year. And you can add to it, but you know, which is great. But you can also, you know, you don't have to work so hard once you get, you know, four or five pieces. And then you just add a piece here or there, yonder, or whatever you want to do. Uh, because yard art's going to last a long time, you know, if you, if you do it right. Because I have some stuff that my mother-in-law painted. And she died in 2006, and she was not in good health, so she probably painted it 2003, maybe, y'all. I still have it. Of course, it has a lot of, it has a lot of sentimental value because she's gone. And um, she always encouraged Bruce and I to be creative. She was a creative soul, and so she always encouraged us. Anything we wanted to do creatively, she always encouraged us. So that. I feel like that was a real blessing. And um, she, for years, I don't know, for several years, Bruce and I hung a lot of wallpaper. Y'all remember wallpaper? I'm dating myself by talking about wallpaper, y'all. <laughs> so we've hung a lot of wallpaper over the years and um, did a lot. We were talking the other day at the dinner table. We've done a lot of remodeling projects. Bruce is a pretty good finished carpenter. He's not a framer. That's not his forte, so if you need a house framed, he's not your guy. But he's pretty good at anything but that. So we've done a lot of projects over the years, and we were talking about that and just different things that went wrong, because you know every project, something goes wrong. And he said, I wonder how much money we spent on remodeling. I said, you don't want to know. You do not want to know. So I had my script liner here, y'all, and I've just kind of put in quite a bit of paint on it. And then just doing my letters. And what I like to do in this case, because the, the font is kind of curly, and these letters are kind of small. This is not a big, big sign. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking this script liner and I'm going between, there's a CNC line on you know each side of the letter, so to speak. I'm painting in, the, the, in between those two CNC lines. That's what I'm doing. That's all I'm doing is just painting some, and this is a dark green. You could definitely do your letters in red or, or you know, whatever, whatever color you want. It doesn't really matter. I think the main thing is just do them. For whatever reason, people always like lettering and signs. So when I first started painting, I, uh, you know, after I felt like I kind of knew what I was doing, I started trying to figure out lettering and I have to tell you I'm not I still don't feel like I'm very good at it and because I painted I had so much on my shoulders I did a lot of stenciling that's why I like the other day when I was stenciling those um, I don't know y'all can't see them they're over there those vertical porch leaners um, I've done a lot of stenciling in my career so I'm very comfortable doing that and the reason I, I did stenciling is because people liked lettering. And if you have to sit here and do like this, that's one way you can do it, no doubt about it. But if you want to stencil, it's usually a lot faster. And so I stenciled. I probably have two, three hundred stencils, so many of them that they're off site. They're over at our storage facility and I go get them when I need them because I don't have enough room to, to keep them here. But that's probably 30 years worth of stencils. And those Mylar stencils, they just never wear out. Never. So, for sale, there's my lettering, and then I've got pumpkins. So, uh, hey, is it, 
Zersal Liza, I hope I'm saying that right. Tell me if I said that right. Just this year must have cost a fortune. Yes, yes, Debbie, yes. You know, and um, so, but um, Bruce is a pretty doggone creative soul. When we were first doing this, he made all of our patterns, y'all. He drew everything. He doesn't do that anymore because we're pretty digital now. He's not a digital person. He's old school. <clears throat> Get out pen and paper kind of thing. That's who he is. But he's pretty, he's pretty creative for a man, I think. And most men that I know, you know, they're very, uh, I don't know, rough, tum tumbly, whatever you want to call it. Redneck, whatever you want to call it. And, um, but I think he's got a lot of his mom in him. So the man knows how to do almost anything between indoor stuff, like hanging wallpaper. He can make curtains, y'all. He's, he's very good about stuff like that. Don't tell him I said that, okay? Uh, he told me one time years ago that, because uh, his parents always worked on the side too. His mom was a designer, interior designer. So they did a lot of remodeling and all that kind of stuff. So he grew up in that environment, y'all. And so he said while all the other kids were out playing sports, he was hanging curtains with his mom and trying to figure out how to get wallpaper on the wall. <laughs> so, all right, almost done. See, it really doesn't take too long. Just kind of sit here with the script liner and just kind of go in between those C and C lines. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm, I'm almost done to the point where I've done all my shading, y'all. Fixing to have finished all my lettering. And now I'm going to do the, y'all, my favoriteest part. Favoriteest, like that's a word. Favoriteest. Do y'all ever use, do y'all ever make up words? I do. <laughs> My favorite part is outlining. It always has been, probably because I feel very comfortable with the script liner in my hand. I didn't, I mean, that took, you know, I didn't used to. That took some work, but I do now. So I'm very grateful for that. And uh, if you can get used to the script liner, you will find you can do so many things with it. If you've got a little bitty area, you can use the script liner to base coat with. You can use, obviously, the script liner to outline. You can use the script liner to uh, do lettering. You can use the script liner to do highlighting. There's a lot of things you can do with the script liner. Okay, I think I got that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm trying to think what I'm gonna do here. What's the best way to go about this, y'all? What's the best way? Okay, I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and do my pumpkins, y'all. That's what I'm gonna do because they're kind of in the middle, but I can work this way. And for my pumpkins, I always start with a light orange base. Then I did the shading in this shading orange, which I, I would consider this like just a regular orange, like a medium orange, okay? I do my shading in that, and then I do my outlining in what I call red orange. Now, honestly, if you wanted to just take this orange and squirt some red in there, you, it, you could make this. So that's really the only difference. You can see this has got a lot of red in it. And if you don't like that much red on your pumpkins, then you could just uh, do a, a much softer color. But y'all know my theory, I, I, you, you look at yard art out in the yard. So I like my stuff to be very bright so you can see it really well from afar. I have Cindy DeLajandro and Cindy Gilbert. Two Cindy's, awesome. Cindy's, how are y'all doing? Hope y'all are doing good. I am, um, I did a lot of work today, but I feel good about it, y'all, because I feel like, you, do you ever have a day where, I don't know if you're like this, sometimes you work and work and you're like, okay, look around. What did I do? I worked my butt off, but you can't tell it. But today was the kind of day, y'all, I worked and worked and I looked around. I was like, okay, I can tell. I can tell. I'm making progress. Making progress. So that's a good feeling. Even though it was hot as heck out there, I was out there taking photos and stuff. I thought I was going to have a heart attack for a little bit. But you know what? I keep making myself go outside and do stuff like that. And even though 
like as people get older, t typically they won't. They'll they'll kind of say, no, I'm not going to do that. It's, you know. But I always make myself do that, y'all, because I feel like that's just a way to kind of keep myself, uh, what is the word I'm trying to say? I don't know if healthy is the right word or, um, um, I guess, uh, keep myself going. Because if you never do anything hard, you just kind of you, you just kind of give up and sit in the chair kind of thing. No can do with that, y'all. So I'm just doing some script lining on the CNC line. I'm taking this um, with this script liner I got in my hand, and all I'm doing is following that CNC line, putting that on the CNC line. Right in the middle of that CNC line is what I'm doing. Now I keep saying CNC. That stands for computerized numerical cutting. It's a machine that we have that cuts all of our uh, blanks for us. Of course, we used to cut it all with a jigsaw, but we now have a CNC. And a lot of people have a CNC. A lot of your small shops can afford a CNC now. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's how I feel, Holly, because I just feel like, you know, you could just stop doing the hard things. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm 57, y'all. You will never see me. Or, you know, my attitude about aging has always been I have no problem saying how old I am or whatever. That doesn't bother me. I'm not one of these that, you know, oh my gosh, I'm getting old. Then, you know, I don't have any value. That's not who I am. That's not how I think. But um, I'll be honest, I probably don't work as much out in the heat as I did when I was younger, but I still don't stop. I don't stop because I feel like you need to kind of do that to keep yourself going. I probably take more breaks, y'all. That's probably the, the, a true statement. When I was younger, I don't think I ever took breaks. I take breaks now, y'all. Because there is a fine line between working and having a heat stroke, and I'm in Texas, so it really wouldn't be too hard, y'all, to have a heat stroke as fine as it is here. So I don't want that. That's not good. So you kind of have to do it with a little bit of a balance. All right, I've got mine. Um, I've outlined all of that. So I'm going to go ahead, and this is my shading red. Now, I like to do shading red as uh, a outline for anything I do in reindeer brown and uh, shading brown. But this one is really, really dark, and it's really too dark, and I don't care for that. So here's what I'm going to do. Hey, Crystal, how are you? So glad you could join us. This shading red is too dark, y'all. So I just took some regular red. The shading red that we use, I hand mix it, and sometimes I can get a little bit crazy. But when you hand mix something, it's not gonna be perfect every single time you do it, because I just go by eyesight. What, like if you go to the store and they mix it, a computer does it. This is mixed by my eyesight. And I, I, actually, I just got it too dark, so I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. Okay. All right, let's try it again, y'all. Try it again. If at first you don't succeed, try again, y'all. So tomorrow is Monday, and you know when I taught school, I don't know how many of you know, but I taught school for a long time. And before that, I actually worked, Debbie Barberi and I worked together at a company in Houston. And so all those years of doing those sorts of things, uh, sometimes I would dread Mondays, but you know I don't dread Mondays anymore. I, I'll sometimes think, oh, God, it's Monday, so i got to get it together because I know the girls are going to be here on Monday. And so I want to make sure I've got my stuff together so they can get the, you know, they got, they're depending on me to know what to do, what kind of work we got lined up. But uh, I don't dread Mondays. And I feel blessed for that. But, y'all, I have to say, honestly, if you, I really think that we probably work harder than we did I do, even though I, when I taught school, I was doing this, and um, I taught school for a long time and did this for a long time, and then I just couldn't take it anymore because it was just a lot of, you know, teaching school is a lot of work, y'all, and then, of course, what we're doing here is, is a lot of work, so in 2015, I left teaching, so I've been doing this full-time since then. 
We actually bought the business that we have in 2012. I've painted for years as one of their vendors. So the business that we own, I bought it from the previous owner. I was her vendor for many years. And then she got elderly and wanted to sell out and I bought it. So I, all those years when she sold my stuff, I taught school. But I can tell you, especially like with the whole COVID thing, y'all, it's been stressful. It's been stressful. Uh, yeah, Debbie, <laughs> Debbie says, she doesn't dread Mondays anymore. Y'all know why? Because she's retired. Debbie just retired very, very recently. And she deserves it. Because she was driving about an hour and 15 minutes from her house. Or maybe an hour and a half to work every day. In Houston traffic, y'all. Houston traffic. If you live here, you know what that means. Crazy people live here, y'all. Crazy drivers. And I'm not, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm not one of them. <laughs> yeah. I've been known to be a little bit of a crazy driver. But since my business and my house are only a half a mile from each other, I don't drive much anymore, y'all. Ashley lives in Conroe, so if I go see her, that's an hour and 15 minutes or so from my house. But that's really the only place I go to speak of. And I don't even go there that often. It seems like we're too busy. A lot of times she comes over here because she's got to come to the store. Ah, uh, see how easy this is with all this outlining I'm doing, y'all? And really outlining, you notice I'm kind of, I move my whole body, don't I? I don't just move my fingers. See how I move my shoulders, I move my elbow, I move my hand. It's kind of, you know, when you're outlining, you just kind of move everything. And then I will just come back here, y'all, and I will put brush strokes Wherever I think they might look good. There's no rhyme, no reason, no rule other than I just try to put brush strokes where there's no other brush strokes that I think would look good. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get the black out. And then uh, the black, I'm gonna make the pole for my sign black and I'm gonna outline my green leaves in black and this thing's done. And y'all, my battery's low, so um, hopefully, um, I'm gonna hurry up and finish. Um, this poor telephone, y'all bought this telephone a couple years back. It's an iPhone. And um, my phone is, um, I have to say, I use my phone like crazy. And I'm talking, my phone rings all the time because you know, it's a business phone. But it's not just that. I have probably 15, 16,000 photos. Most of it's yard art on this phone. All of the photos that I take for the business are taken on this phone. All the lives that I do for this business are on this phone. So this poor phone, sometimes I'll have to charge it once or twice during the day because the battery just give out. It just gives out. And especially like today, y'all, I was out in the heat. I was taking a lot of photos of uh, products out in the yard. And especially at 12 o'clock when I was out there, it was so hot. And that phone will get hot. And it has shut down on me before because the phone got too hot when I was outside taking videos and photos. So I can't complain. This phone has been a great phone so far. I think I've had it two years, y'all. Two years. And it has been, and I spent quite a bit on it because I've got the iPhone 11 when that came out because of the, the lens and the photos are really good. So really, it's a, I always say phones nowadays are more of a computer than a phone. We call it a phone. It's really more of a computer than a phone. Okay, <clears throat> so take a looky-looky. See, I think, I don't know how long I've been on here, but not very long. So what I'm going to do is I want you to look at this and watch what I do. So when you're doing your painting, put this over here where y'all can see, okay? All this is done except for, excuse me, highlighting. Highlighting is going to take me about 30, 45 seconds, maybe a minute if I talk too much. I'm going to put some white paint in here and stir it up with some water. And, but I want you to see what this highlighting is going to do. It just takes this piece and makes it so much brighter. And y'all know I'm all about the brightness. So I have it pretty watered down, okay? It's not the consistency of water, but it's it's kind of not too far off. Brush thief. 
Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just spend a little bit of time and I'm going to take this script liner and I'm just going to kind of come in here. And the thing that the way I highlight, not saying you have to, but the way I highlight is really no rhyme nor reason. Other than I try to put the white strokes where the base color, in this case, it's light orange, right? It's light orange on these pumpkins. That's the base color. So I try to put my strokes wherever the base color is showing through. I don't really want my highlights on top of my shading or my outline. So wherever there's a, a color of my base color poking through, I will put a little bit of white paint on there. And I try to do it everywhere. I'm a highlighting fool, y'all. It's just something I've always done. So in this case, I'm gonna kind of put up white highlights just where that uh, reindeer brown is kind of peeking out from underneath the shading or the highlight or the outline. Here I'll kind of go in between the veins of the leaves. I did that. Go over here and do this. And we are almost done, y'all. See? And then, of course, down here, my, my brush strokes are bigger on the basket because that's a bigger area. And you don't have to highlight. It just, to me, for the 30 seconds or 60 seconds or even if it takes you two minutes. For that kind of time, it makes a big difference, I think. And then I'd come over here and just go like this. Okay, let me look, y'all. Now, I would highlight this up here, but that's way too wet. But in the morning when I wake up, I'll put a white highlight there, one there, and then at the top. That's it. Well, I can show y'all this one. This one's finished. See all those highlights? And um, I just kind of put them everywhere. Anyway, this is something that y'all can buy the blank or you can buy the template if you're interested. We will be on this week. Ashley will be doing a um, the welcome fall with like the leopard print. I think it's a leopard print and maybe a plaid on the pumpkin. And I don't know yet. I think I'm going to be doing the mummy. I'm not real sure. But I'll be letting y'all know. So thank y'all for hanging out with me. Hope y'all have a great Sunday evening and a good week. And we will see y'all later. Bye.